Did I scare you? This will be our first video for the assembly and painting of Dreadfleet. Now I've as uh, assembled here um, just the basic bare bones minimum of stuff that you're going to need when you begin your project. Um, don't become daunted. We'll go over these things and half of the stuff you probably already have in your home. Now of course this video series is going to be focused mainly on the absolute beginner so if you're already into wargaming and assembling miniatures and painting and such and such um, you could just of course skip this video since you're already there. Um, but for the rest of you I'll just go over a few things here that you're going to need. Uh, the first thing which everyone will have in their house, some form of jar to keep water in. Uh, I recommend an X-Acto knife, although I don't always use the X-Acto knife, but I haven't taken a look yet at the Dreadfleet sprues because obviously it's not here yet. So I'm not sure if we'll be needing that, but I'm sure if you have some in your house, you know, just, just bring it out. Uh, you may or may not have some of these in your house. These are just your standard metal files. You can kind of see their size. You can get them at any hardware store. Um, I use just a flat and a round. I don't, uh, they come in all different shapes. These are the ones I use 99% of the time. Next, your trusty friend, clippers. There's many different kind of clippers. This is the kind I use the most. I call it the wedge head. I don't know what its technical name is. That's what I'm calling it. Another very important thing, super glue. There's a lot of different kind of super glues. Uh, one of the more prominent modeling super glues is called Zappa Gap, but you can't always get that everywhere. So I go with uh, this Loctite. Loctite is good for both metal and plastic miniatures, so I've used that as my fallback glue. I've used it for years, very happy with it, and should I ever run out of glue or have a problem, I could just run to the closest store. I don't have to even go to a hardware store, Walmart or Target or something will have it. So very easy to get a hold of. Next, primers. Now, a lot of you may ask, why do I need a primer? Do I need a primer? Um. The small answer is no. You don't really need a primer. You can paint directly on plastic, but I'm going to tell you from experience it's a lot harder to paint directly on plastic without using a primer first. The primer will give your plastic a nice coat, kind of like a first layer of paint. It'll be quick and easy, and after that the lay down of paint is smooth and like gravy. Now I don't uh, well, I can't say I don't recommend buying like GW primer or something. It's it's really it's a, it's more expensive than you need, and you can go to any hardware store and pick up a primer. I suggest uh, an automotive primer. Whatever primer you're going to use on a car, you can use it on these plastics. My preferred brand is Rust-Oleum. Of course, there's Valspar. There's different brands, and they come in different colors as well. This is kind of like a charcoal color. They come in black, gray, white, and other colors. Uh, a finishing spray. This is, you won't need this yet. You won't need this for a while. Um, but I'm just showing it in the video here. Uh, a finishing spray just to, uh, once your project is finished, it will protect your models. Again, it's not necessary, but if you want durability in your models, and since you're going to be touching them a lot, and they'll be knocking into each other probably, um, you're going to want to enhance the paint's durability so you don't have to keep going back and touching up. So always try to um, coat your models in something after they're done. Now we're going to move on to more of the nitty gritty. One thing which you will most likely have to run out and buy will be brushes. There's a lot of talk about brushes. Uh, there's a lot of different types of brushes. I'm just going to simplify it for you. Pretty much you're going to want to begin this project with a good helping of what I call medium brushes, a couple of scrabbly brushes, which if you're a complete beginner to painting, you're not even going to have these yet because these are more for dry brushing and, well, we'll talk about dry brushing later, but basically it's just really fringed, frayed, crappy brushes. And uh, by the way, Citadel brushes work very well for that, I find. 
Um, I know a lot of you swear by uh, the GW brushes. Oh, I don't know how you do it. Um, I go to art stores just to get brushes. I don't get them anywhere else but an arts and craft supply store. You're going to want at least two extremely fine brushes. And most of the time, they will come in these nice little tubes, which I'm having trouble getting off here. That's a little too fine for you to see, but you get the idea of how small that brush is. Now the brushes will have a title. Usually uh, these smaller brushes are going to be called spotters and sometimes they'll have uh, a certain number. I'm not seeing that on here. Well 18 over 0 will be this brush number. I don't even go by the brush numbers. Honestly, I just go f looking for the size brush I want in the aisle. Uh, I used to go by brands, but after years of trying all these different brushes, honestly, they're kind of all the same to me. As long as I'm spending at least mm, 3 to $5 per brush, uh, I know I'm going to get a, la a brush that's going to last a decent amount of time and have good, good quality. So there's uh, a range of different selections of brushes. This is a brand I've particularly liked. Master's Touch, or Painter's Touch, rather. You're just going to want a helping of brushes with tips of varying sizes. Again, I don't, like I said, you can follow these sizings, 5 over 0. But they're, they're different between different paint lines, so if you get, you know, simply Simon's 5 over 0, you can go to a different line and it'll say something completely different. And even amongst the same line, like I found with uh, um, the Painter's Touch brushes, a 12 over 0 like this brush is can look completely different on another 12 over 0 brush. It could be longer uh, fibers or shorter fibers and blah, blah, blah. Just just eyeball it. Honestly, just, just keep it simple. Eyeball it. Get two or three of their absolute tiniest brushes, uh, four or five medium sized brushes, and a, a couple of bigger fatter brushes like this, and then um, a couple of crappy brushes that we can do some dry brushing with. And you're, you'll be good to go. It'll be uh, a decent amount of money you'll be putting out for the brushes, but it will last you the whole project. So, so don't worry too much. Um, the next thing, of course, last but not least, I suppose, your paints. This is another area of contention. Uh, I've used several different brands of paints. My personal favorite uh, is Reaper. I used to use Reaper exclusively as a professional painter, but recently switched over to Citadel. Um, why? Uh, I just I got sick of having you know, a couple hundred Reaper paints that I've been carrying around and it, it, the more colors, it was almost the, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I had so much colors to choose from that sometimes that in itself was a problem. I'm not a paint mixer. I don't like mixing paints very often. So when I went with Reaper, they had such an extensive line, you didn't even need to uh, mix paints. So that could be an idea for you. Uh, Above Reaper paints would be Vallejo paints. Um, Vallejo paints are probably right now the top of the line for miniatures painters. And if you're just looking at this project and thinking, eh, I'm not going to do, you know, get into mini wargaming and I really just want to paint this project up and maybe a couple things here and there, you, you don't need to invest in, you know, that professional high quality um, Vallejo. Reaper would be just fine, and then um, a step down from Reaper would be Citadel, and I'll explain a little bit why. Um, now this little bottle here, which isn't a real bottle, I picked up this little mini on Cool Mini or not, and I'm not sure if it's a Forge World, but this is basically what a Vallejo or a Reaper bottle will be sized at and look like, without, of course, the monster eating someone's finger that I have yet to paint. It comes in a dropper bottle. So basically you put a drop in your little paint tray, which I don't have here. 
and it saves on the paint. The paint lasts for years. It's, it's a wonderful system. You only take out as much paint as you want and it's perfect for mixing because you say, okay, I need a three to one ratio of this color. You go plink, 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 plink. It's just really easy. Not like mixing Citadel paints at all. Uh, in terms of quality, I find Citadel to be maybe a slightly thicker paint than Reaper. Reaper, again, is geared more for the professional who likes to do a lot of layering. So thinner is always better in terms of like blending. Citadel, I, I like the paint. I, I, don't, I can't really argue about it, especially since they changed their pot system and the paint lasts a lot longer. Let me set this camera down here so I can explain something, possibly, maybe.